Yes, yes, yes. What's going on, everybody? What's going on? What's going on? Stay tuned. This conversation is going to be fun and informative. So tune in. Share the video. We started in one minute. Share the video. <coughs> Compartan el video, por favor. Vamos a comenzar en un minuto. Este, este live va a ser informativo y divertido. Nos vamos a divertir aquí. Por favor, compartan el live. Ya vamos a comenzar en unos segundos. Let me know how's the sound, everybody. Déjenme saber cómo está el sonido. Yes, yes. Aquí estamos, aquí estamos. Okay, everybody. Okay, here we go, here we go. Everybody, welcome to another episode of Fun Conversations with Sensation. I'm your boy, DJ Sensation. Y aquí estamos en vivo. So today is my honor, is my privilege to bring another fellow Garifuna entrepreneur to my show to pick his brains to get to know him and for him to showcase what he has to offer to the world and his name is Mariano Martinez what's going on what's going on what's going on yes, brother yes, thank yes. you for the intro man thank you for the intro <laughs> <laughs> you know the vibe, bro. what's going on yes yes we're okay. here man um, first, before we you know we start with the questions and everything, I want to ask you, you know, mm -hmm. tell you, uh, thank you for allowing me to do this. Thank, thank you for allowing me to ask you, you know, the questions, and you know, for people to get to know you as well. Absolutely. And, you no, know, let's get started with this. Absolutely, um, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show, man. Appreciate you. For the people that don't know who Mariano Martinez is, mm -hmm. can you tell them real quick? You know, explain. Let them know who you are. Absolutely. I'm a dancer, choreographer, uh, entrepreneur, business owner. I do a lot with uh, quinceañeras and sweet sixteens. Also, I now help schools, nonprofits, and youth organizations create engaging, impactful, and transformative dance programs with my youth empowerment to dance curriculum for the schools and nonprofits. Nice. Yeah, That's thank awesome. You. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> that was a great. That, that was nice. Quick intro to the point. <laughs> Thanks. Man. And um. You know, you're a fellow Garifuna, right? Yes, That's yes. Beautiful. Proud. Claro que sí, yes. claro que sí. And uh, what, pueblo, what, uh, what pueblo or city uh, does mm -hmm. your family come from back from the motherland? My father's from Santa Fe. My mother's from Cortez. Oh, nice. Cortez. Yeah, Cortez. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm from Cortez. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. Yeah, but, you yeah. know, I, I always be like, I'm from Travesia, but, you know, Travesia is part of Cortez. It's part so. of Cortez, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have family in Travesia. I still have family in, um, was it, Camagüey? That's where the majority of my family is at. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the crazy, one thing that you probably don't know, like, mm -hmm. of course, um, my, G, my, my brand name is GME, right, my company. It stands okay. for Guevara. Mariano Entertainment. <laughs> I saw that. Name, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, my last name is your first name. My first name. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, you know, that's interesting. I was I was really saving that for the interview to let yeah, you know. Yeah, that's what's <laughs> up. That's crazy because I remember the first time somebody um I think it was somebody from Belize. They were like, "Your first name is a last name." I said, "Huh." <laughs> was like, yeah, your first name is the last name. I said, no, it's not. I said, it's my first name. They're like, no, your first name is the last name. I'm like, yo, <laughs> I don't know. But then I started I mean. meeting more the, um, Familia Marianos. I'm like, yes. oh, shoot. Okay. <laughs> yes. It's true. Yeah. And um, 
another thing like if anybody if yeah if anybody watching if you ever have a question feel free to ask it uh if, if mariano or myself see it uh we will yes. answer it uh accordingly and um real quick doesn't he look like neo like yeah. my boy over here looks like neo like doesn't he like i know y'all see it too right <laughs> yeah shout out to him and he dances too so like that's yes crazy. yes absolutely yeah i've heard that before the whole neo thing man <laughs> yeah and i noticed on your profile says that you know you went you you went to um uh, you worked in the um, New York State Department of Education. So I've always been a vendor. That's one thing that, that people think. So I've always been a vendor for the Department of Education. Like, oh, okay. um, I provide services to the Department of Education. Nice. I've never really been a part of it. Yeah, there's a... Ah, okay, so what the Department of Ed... So there's, there's a lot of good teachers in the system, yes. but the system itself kind of like does not allow the teachers to really teach or educate the way they want to. Mm -hmm. So this is why I've never wanted to be a Department of Ed teacher. Okay. So, yeah, because it's, the, you know, the rules and regulations and all that. Like, I'll be a vendor. I'll come in and, you know, provide services, and then I'm out. Okay. Yeah. And, and, what kind, and what kind of services do you provide while you do it? So I'm um, there. What I provide for them is, is dance services. So I, I, yeah, I create a curriculum out of everything that I've been doing all these years, and I started servicing the schools, um, and they, you know, I started pitching it to the schools, and they liked it, and they started um, hiring, you know, basically paying me to provide my service in the schools. That's that's amazing. That's yeah. honestly, uh, I think you are the first person I met from my community, my culture. That's doing something like that for that, you know, in that with the schools and stuff. Like yeah. That. Like taking yeah, it to thanks, like another man. level, another mm -hmm. level, you know, like professional status type shit. Yeah. Yeah. And um, everybody, for las personas que están aquí con nosotros, compartan el video. Aquí estoy con Mariano compartan, Martínez. Compartan, compartan. Estamos conociéndolo, haciéndole preguntas. Él es una persona que baila, es un coreógrafo uh, y, y es un empresario. Entonces, Exacto. él tiene bastante negocios en que él puede demostrar lo que él puede hacer, puede poner la cultura allá afuera también, y por eso lo tengo aquí en mi show, y es un gran placer. Compartan el live, por favor. Muchas gracias. Gracias, and, um, gracias, mi gente. Yes. And, like, when you, like, what some of the experiences that you have had while working for the, you know, for the schools and stuff? Um, you know, the majority of my experiences have been great. There's, I've actually learned, um, how to actually speak their language mm -hmm. and and that's how i've been able to like increase my income because I've, I've known how to speak their, their language and stuff like that so when they when they say that there's no money for x y and z yes there is you just got to know how to say it what you got to know how to speak their language oh okay so, so i learned that yeah it's all in the lingo in the paperwork it's all, it's all in the lingo bro it's all in the lingo Unfortunately, it's like that in almost anything. Like it's always like politics and stuff, yeah. you know. Like yeah. even if it's for the for the well-being of the students and the growth of the students and stuff, there's always gotta be some type of red so, tape. Red tape. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, exactly. There's always gotta be some kind of red tape. And like honestly, like how you also study psychology, right? Yes, sir. I study well, psychology. <laughs> Were you like were you able to uh, finish the the curriculum that you graduated from, or you just took classes and stuff? No, no, I have a bachelor's in psychology. Oh, I don't, I don't, you you, <laughs> you good for catching that, man? You really good. I love that. Yeah, I have a bachelor's in psychology. This is how I'm able to do everything that I do. Um, I really did get the bachelor's just as a the piece of paper to 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 tell everybody get out of my way you yes. know what i'm saying like that's, that's why i got my bachelor's <laughs> you yeah. Hey, yeah. honestly it's, it's a good weapon to have on your belt yeah yeah you know like exactly. it, it doesn't it doesn't only show that you are educated it also shows mm -hmm. that you you are able to commit to something and finish it absolutely you know, like me myself i'm still trying to pursue my degree i'm about to be finished but i'm not gonna lie i've been on this for too long yeah but which like, degree are you trying to get um i'm trying to kinesiology whoa Yes. Okay. 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 <laughs> That's what's up. I do it for health purposes. It's, it's, it, was, it started off as a selfish thing, you know, for my own well-being to learn how to eat right or exercise yeah. and all of that. But then yeah. I was like, I could make a business out of this, you know, being able to teach people other things like this that they are looking forward to working out themselves. Absolutely. You know, and eating better. And eating better. Yeah. Absolutely. Have you started that yet? Yeah, I, I, I do. I do. You, I, I do you, my you, my fitness sessions. You do. 
for the for the people. Yes. You're selling that as a service. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Yes. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Para la gente allá afuera que didn't know that I do um, training sessions. <laughs> I do it. I'm a fitness. I'm a certified fitness trainer, a weight loss specialist. You know, I also took classes for women for women's um, exercise and fitness. So yeah, but this is not about me. It's about my boy Mariano Martinez. <laughs> That's good though, so, man. We gotta yeah, get that out there. And um, how has your degree, your education, how has it benefit benefited you and your and your um businesses as well? So. The way it's benefited me, um, I realized like very early on that I was doing two things that I loved. One was dancing and the other one was like empowering the youth. So I put it, that's how I put it together. You know, youth empowerment through dance. Um, it's a lot of psychology that's in there. I don't ever really say this, you know what I'm saying? Because I can say it now, right? I can say it now because psychology and mental health and all that stuff has become mainstream. Yes. It, wasn't, it wasn't mainstream back in the days. So I had to hide what I was doing behind dancing. I like how you put that because you know what's crazy? Mm -hmm. In our culture, like um, I know in, 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 a, in a comment that you um, that you wrote uh, under my post, yeah. uh, we were like, um, what's the word that you used? Um, indoctrinated. indoctrinated. Mm -hmm. Yes. Into uh, believing in, the, in thinking that we uh can, are not capable of achieving certain things or achieving what we want to do uh that's that right. very negative mentality that was um put on to our mm -hmm. mindset since mm -hmm. since childhood since childhood so, yeah so like how do you think that that uh that affected you growing up you know what um i, I, I was gonna kind of say that it doesn't or did it because my parents were very lenient but that's not the, that's not that's still not true um I will say I had to, in a sense, let my parents know very early on that I was like, I was a, I, I was born with, or can still connected to my higher power. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, they had to, like, they used to call me El Viejo growing <laughs> up, you know what I'm saying? El Viejo. Cause it's like. How does he know all of these things and we never said anything? How does he know this and how does he know that? You know, so it, very early on, they were able to like, just like kind of, in, in a sense, give me enough room. You know? I like that. Yeah, they were, they were able to give me enough room. So I still had to deal with, uh, um, you know, again, that might not work or this might not work, X, Y, and Z as an undertone it was never really directly said but it was an undertone you know sometimes they will hit it, will hit you with that subliminal stuff you know, yeah, yeah exactly it's funny exactly. how you said like like el viejo that they, they will call you that because mm -hmm. um i've heard that even now sometimes people be like oh the way i dance i dance like a viejo which mm -hmm. is fine because honestly mm -hmm. i always felt like i wasn't really like part of my generation per se in my mentality was has always been very um different yes and i feel you and i i, I growing up sometimes it's difficult hearing that because it could make you feel like you out of place or you don't belong mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. when you get older you start to appreciate certain comments because that shows you that you're not like everybody else walking everybody in. else that's right yes sir <laughs> it, it makes you different bro it makes and, you different it makes you stand out and the psychology but um, the psychology of that, and it connects with spirituality, which yeah. our culture is heavy on. Yes. We're very heavy on spirituality, They're right? Very so heavy. How, how do you think, like, uh, the belief of spirituality and, like, and the belief of science, such as psychology, how do they correlate? You know what? That's a deep question. Very good. Um, spirituality and psychology. Any and everything that we're learning today was already ours, first and foremost. It was already ours. But what they did was they took it from us and then sh showed it back to us as if it was theirs. You know what I'm saying? So so psychology, psychology, spirituality, science, all of this stuff, it was ours first. Yes. Like there's even, you know, there's, there's proof that, you know, Europeans went and studied in Africa. 
Yes. This is proof. They studied in Africa. And then they came back, you know, and they made everything look like it was theirs. Yes. And and it even taught us, here's the other part, they taught us certain things backwards or out of place so that we could get confused. Yes. I agree. And mm-hmm. that's where and that's where religion comes in. Um mm-hmm. not not no disrespect to anybody that have their own personal beliefs uh, at all. But it's right. just one of those things where like uh, before the colonizers arrived to the continent, I'm pretty sure uh, the people that resided in the continent of Africa already had their own customs, their own beliefs, their own type of religion, which ma- was mainly based on spirituality. Spirituality, yeah. So it then was, the colonizers yeah. came and they, like you said, they stripped all the way, all of that away, and they left us with their with their diseases. Their yes. Everything. Yes. Everything yes. Wrong diseases. That they they're. they're, they're their mindset, their mind frame, all of that. It's interesting that you say that too, because I still fight with um, the two systems, right? So when I was younger, and this is the, like I always say, this is the best thing my father could have ever done. I'm getting chills. This is the best thing my father could have ever done was to take me to Honduras when I was six, because we pulled up to my aunt's, to my grandmother's house, right? And at the time, when I was six years old, there was no electricity in the, in the, in the Pueblo. There was no electricity. Yeah, Santa, Santa Fe, right? Santa Fe, yeah. Santa Fe had no, no, no electricity when I was six. So we pull up. You know, my grandmother sees us. She hugs us, all that stuff like that. And then she goes back to doing something that she was doing, right? And so what she was doing was she, um, she had this, this, uh, tomal, Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. With fire underneath it. Did you know she had another another piece of metal on top? And then she took this shirt, put it on top of something else, took the hot metal, and started going across the shirt. And I was like, oh, she's ironing. Right? Now, I had never seen it done like that before. I see my mother iron, but it's an electric iron, you know what I'm saying? XYZ. My grandmother had to heat the metal yeah. so that it was hot enough to go over the shirt and fly another shirt. I learned at the age of six years old, there's always another way. Ooh. <laughs> yes. There's always another way. Uh, you, you, know, you know what's crazy? Like... Uh, <clears throat> Um, I like I like the positive mentality, the words that you spread. Like uh, that that um, that's what Thank made you. me want to interview you from the beginning. Like when when you wrote that, I think yes. um, it was the higher powers like that made you write that on my comments because t- without that, I probably would have never approached you and would have been like, "Yo, can I interview you?" Because what you I said, I loved. I love how you said it, it was just so like uh, positive, so and um, you know mm. uplifting, like mentally and everything. Thank I was you. like. The way you wrote, like, people like me, I'd read stuff like that. So there's some people probably, oh, he wrote too much. I'm going to skip it. But that's the problem. But oftentimes, yeah. we skip things that we should be reading. That we should be reading. That's right. But instead, we, we get entertained by nonsense. Oh, and that's the other, that's the uh, trick that they did to us. They indoctrinated us in these school systems, making us read a bunch of stuff that was not, not important to us. It didn't value us. First and foremost, if anything, it made us feel dumb or made us feel less than. And so now once you leave that system, you don't want to read no more. I this agree. is why a lot of people, uh, the majority is a high percentage of people. Once they finish undergrad or graduate school, they don't read for themselves anymore. Jeez. Damn, yo, that's yo. Yeah, because they've been bombarded with all of this stuff. Nonsense. Yes, like social media. Social media is a great tool. Like, for instance, right now, we're talking, we're having a great conversation using social media, right? Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it is often used, like, for many, 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 many other things that is not productive. Brother. Yeah, go ahead, man. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. I, no say, say what you got to say, bro. Here's the thing. And this is, this is another thing that they did, right? Yeah. And I say they. If I, if I, if we take a bunch of dogs, yes, we put them in a cage, right? Yes. For years. And we feed them scrap, <laughs> right? We feed them scrap. 
whatever it is that we're just gonna throw at them, bada da boom boom. When you open the cage, do you think those dogs are gonna go wanna go for filet mignon or they're gonna wanna go for crap that they're used to? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I love that analogy. Yes, they would definitely stay their ass back. You see what I'm saying? So right now we have the ability to to like these resources that we have. What we're doing right now, if this was 1970, we wouldn't be able to do this. No, no. First and foremost, we would have to go to to us. We would have to come to the same state. Yes, that's one. Rent a studio or rent a location. Pay them. First and foremost, see if they would allow us to do it. Then pay them whatever prices they're asking for. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And then to see if they're going to air it or, or whatever. Right? Yes. We still have all this gatekeeping. Yep. Right now, we have the ability to put our own stuff out, our own programs out, our own show us in the highest light. But because we were never taught to show ourselves in the highest light, we show ourselves as bullshit. I agree. Again, you put dogs and just give them scrap. Once they're on their own, they're going to look for the scraps that they're used to. We have the power right now to make mil billions yes. with all of this technology and this information, bro. Billions. billions. And we have to learn how to use it properly. And, that, and that, that's where I was coming from when I wrote my post. Uh, sometimes um, it could be lost in translation. Or to depend on who reads it, right? But like when I spoke about the Garifuna uh, business market, I really did feel like uh, do not did do uh, feel that like things could be much better. I feel like absolutely if people want to take more pride and, and, and more dedication into what they do. The products and the services will be up to par. Uh, absolutely. But oftentimes in our community, they like cutting corners. Um, like i feel like most of the time like our people like especially the elders the elders were used to working hard they most yes. of the time it's like my generation or younger that are starting to try to like cut corners and get the money fast instead yes. of putting the time and working to yes. elevate themselves the proper way you know and it, it all has to do with social media going back yeah. to the circle yeah like social yeah. media has made us think that like the only way to make it is just like just being an influencer or or just being a clown on, on, on social media because you're going to see the likes and the followings and all that. Nah, mm -hmm. like, I, I still believe you could have some type of skills, even if it's like a verbal skill like us, like a communication. Right, communication skills. skill. Mm -hmm. yep. That is a skill. But yep. a lot of these people misconstrue that skill and put it on social media and they make it look like clown clownery. You know, they, they're not ready for this type of conversation absolutely and then and mind you again this is what they powers that be want to happen this is why they take shows off the air like the cosby show a different world yes you know what i'm saying shows like that that showed black people going to college getting the higher education coming together and working together yes oh we're gonna take we can't we can't have them do that we gotta take that off Yep. We have to show this reality TV, which is fake. It's not real. Yeah. They add all the drama to it and all the fighting. And then being that we see this stuff, yep. everybody begins to imitate that and think that that's how we're supposed to get along with each other. <laughs> it's fake. It's fake. Yeah. Like, They're making it real. It, it's crazy. Like honestly, if yeah, if anybody's watching right now, keep sharing the video. Share as many times as you want. Yeah, y'all, share very, this out. We're having a very deep conversation with Mr. Mariano Martinez from J Dove Productions. Yes, yes. And um, do you believe like uh like this type of mentality that has been indoctrinated onto us often blocks people from succeeding? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. We've been trained not to see abundance and possibility. We've been trained to see lack. Yes. And this is why even as, as many of us as there is, we think that there can only be one. We think that there can only be one. And they made us believe that there can only be one. Mm -hmm. 
right? Only one. Oh, and, and I've heard it before. Oh, yo ya no voy a hacer tal y tal porque este ya lo está haciendo. What rule says that because Enrique es, lo está haciendo, ya no lo puedes hacer tú? Exactly. Where does it say that? You know what I'm saying? But that also comes from a limited mindset and a limited thinking because everybody, make the majority, are trying to hit the same five or six people. Yes. When in reality, our talents, our abilities, and our skills were made to reach the world. I agree. Yes. Yes. It was made I'll... to reach the world. Um, Like... La, la, la manera la manera de, de, de la manera de pensar de, de nosotros um, a veces puede ser bastante tóxico pero uh -huh. uh, no, es, no, no, no voy a darle la culpa uh, solo porque somos garífanos no es eso porque hay muchos no. tóxicos con los jamaiquinos yeah, yeah. tóxicos con los yeah. africanos there's toxic yeah. in every culture in every culture los europeos lo, de, de, de todas partes hay, eh, está, existe eso so, no solo no solo somos nosotros And, but, and this is my thing, Mariano, for a culture, for a community, for a, uh, a group of people that gained their freedom back in like probably the 1700s, 1700s. and moved to, you know, from the islands to the, to the mainland of Central America between Belize, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, for that many centuries now, uh, by now, I feel like our people should be in a higher place uh, as a community and also individually because we've been... We've been having a culture until this day compared to other races that were, you know, brainwashed into adopting other cultures. We still have our culture yeah. until this yes. day. Yes. So I feel like yes. uh, th there should be more pride in that. Us, we should be somewhere higher by now. Like more Garifuna celebs. You know, like I'm talking about Garifuna, Garifunas, because I know they're Garifuna celebrities, bro. But I'm talking about the ones that represent it. That be like, yo. I'm Garifuna, I come from Honduras, Guatemala, whatever, la, la, la. speak mm -hmm. about it, mm -hmm. you know? So what do you think about that? Do you think, like, the lack of, like, exposure and support from fellow people that have made it, that are professionals, and they don't mm. want to share their knowledge, do you think that's also contributing to the lack of growth within our community? Damn, that's a good question. Oy. Oh, man. Here's, here's my take on this, right? We've been again brainwashed and indoctrinated. Yes. Right. To believe that all these other cultures are better than ours. That's one. Yes. This it reminds me, and 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 I know it, it has to do with the discrimination that our parents and grandparents have to go through in Honduras and Belize yes. and Guatemala, right? They didn't want us to be discriminated against. They didn't want us to feel that. Yes. So it's it's a matter of assimilate as much as possible so that you can be successful. I agree. That's where that comes from. Assimilate as much as possible. Get away from the coach as much as possible so that you can be successful. This is the reason why, like my father, you know, rest in peace, I remember... Before him passing away, like the year before he was passing, I went back to Honduras to check on him, you know, and everything. He was good, but I went to check on him. He was like, yo, lo juventud de ahora no hablan, no hablan, ya no hablan garifuna, que esto, que lo otro, this and that. And I'm like, you never spoke garifuna to us in the house. So how you expect us or even the new generation to speak garifuna when you didn't? Like you catching on that he, he caught on at the very end. Damn, we should have kept our language. Yes. And we should have showed the, the, the youth our language. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So, but I, I get that they were discriminated against. So they, again, they were learning English with us. So one of the languages had to move over. Right. I agree. And, and it yes. was sad that, you know, the guy not went to the side. Um, so that's that part. The other part I feel is because many of us don't know our full power and our full potential, those that break away and do 
make you know make it because there's i don't know if you know this guy if not billionaires they exist they exist but they're never gonna say i'm one of them you know what i'm saying it's not gonna happen not yes. many right let me see yep let me see what what they're saying in the chat too but um so the other part of it is because of the because of us not knowing our full potential in place yes kind of don't come back sometimes or don't pull the next person up because they feel that they're gonna get pulled back down yes you know what i'm saying once we all rise as a people then that's where it's gonna be like you know i'm yeah i'm a guy from a millionaire i'm this i'm that you know x y and z let me see what somebody wrote um yep i like let me see crocodile yep like i said the hemos the point fingers on guy from us because photos yep yep yeah that's true i disagree because so la mentalidad del black culture in general for black people prefieren invertir os subir otra cultura antes de la yeah here's the thing right la cosa para mi es esto lo que lo que siempre lo que quiere el humano es ser reconocido yep y ser Shout. aceptado yep acceptance right acceptance and to be recognized and to be you know yeah recognized and accepted if social media is doing this big big job of saying this phone is better than this phone then everybody's gonna run for this phone if everybody's saying this culture is better than this culture then this culture is going to wash out to be like this one. Yes. Yes. So now I always say there's a fight between evil, evil and good, right? Yes. Good and evil. Always. The only way evil will win is if those of us who are on the side of good are not loud enough. Oof. That's the only way. We have to continue to promote that we are Garifuna. We have to continue to be proud of the fact that we are Garifuna. We have to we need Garifuna schools. Yes. We need Garifuna institutions. Yes. Because the only the only way and the only the only way and reason they're able to brainwash us yep. is because we all go to Spanish schools. In Honduras, estamos en escuelas españolas. Exactly. No estamos en escuelas Garifuna. Nope. No estamos aprendiendo nuestra etnia, nuestra cultura. Está. It's, it's second nature. It's almost like. What, what am I saying? If you have two children and you favor and you show you favor in one, even if you love this one, he's still going to feel like he's second best. Facts. And then you're showing the rest of the family that this one is second best. Yes. And that's what we've done with our culture. We've allowed ourselves to be brainwashed, to feel and made be believe that we're second best. I agree, man. That's deep, and a lot of people like okay, this, like 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 we've been talking, um, like we said, it's not just our culture, right? But we are yeah. Garifuna men, and we're mm -hmm. talking about that like, prospects of business and entrepreneurship and psychology and spirituality within the Garifuna community that has mm -hmm. contributed to the growth or the lack of our businesses and everything yes. else. So yes. yes, it's not just pointing the finger on ourselves. No. But also, sometimes to see what's wrong with you, sometimes you got to look at yourself in the mirror. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I, I, I'll say this, and I'm going to cut you off. We have to look at what's wrong, mm -hmm. but we also have to praise and appreciate what's right. We have to. Yes. We have to. You know, that's the only way to combat what's wrong. Yes. Um, I was having this conversation with with someone else, with a, with a friend of mine, Daisy. And I told her, I said, the reason we a lot of times cannot take constructive criticism yep. because we've been criticized our whole lives. That we're sensitive now. 
that now is sensitive. So, aunque yo te diga, hey, fíjate que me gusta esa gorra, que te, te ves bien con esa gorra. You can say to me, hey, esa es la misma gorra que siempre uso. ¿Qué? ¿Me, me está rebanando, loco? ¿Qué onda? No. Me gusta la gorra y te ve, se ve bien. Facts. That's all I'm saying. But we get extra sensitive because we keep, we always have been hearing. Yep. Right? We hear. And from little. Vos anda, anda a buscar que hacer. Hell, that's the weirdo. Siempre jodete ya. Hell, hey, anda a estudiar. Anda a hacer algo productivo. Hey, ¿por qué estás en la calle haciendo estupideces? So when somebody comes and says, hey, fíjate que eso está mal, no hagas eso. Sería pues, mejor si lo haces así y eso te va a beneficiar. Hey, lo que están escuchando ellos es, está, eso, vos sos estúpido, vos andas a buscar qué hacer. Yep. ¿Por qué no buscas algo que sea más productivo? That's, es lo que estamos escuchando. Eso es verdad. Yeah. Aunque una persona quiera decirnos, hey, fíjate que eso te, te sal, se saldría mejor si lo haces así, así. No sabemos aceptar eso porque lo que estamos escuchando es el auto, el, yeah, es el tape que está jugando desde, desde niño que nos, que nos dice, no servimos. Y eso, and that's where, ahí es donde viene el tema de psicología. Uh -huh. Childhood psychology. Y muchos uh -huh. de nosotros en nuestra comunidad tenemos trauma. Not trying to be funny, es la verdad. Tenemos bastante trauma que no se ha buscado profesional para poder hablar de eso y poder uh, arreglar cualquier problema que tú tienes emocionalmente. Porque nunca has buscado un profesional que te ayude. Especialmente like our parents. Back in our parents' day. Compa. Ooh. Talk about it. They never, bro. They never had help. Bro. No, no. And and our parents have gone through some of the worst shit, some of the worst trauma. Facts. And they just had to keep going. They were never able to process it and heal. And that's what we are. That's what we're receiving. Yes. That's what we've received, and that's what we're receiving. You know, there's people that even even in the again in the way we talk. This is why I'm always careful of what I say to children, and this is why I always work with children because I know that I can harm them or empower them with my words. Facts. You know, people always say like I've heard all the time. Oh, esto esto juro de ahora no quieren hacer nada. Esto joven no no quieren hacer nada. Solo quieren bagiar. Hey. O, 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 o solo quiere faltar respeto. And I'm like, yo no conozco a ningún joven que me haya faltado respeto a mí, fíjate. Pero, es, pero ¿por qué? Porque yo sé cómo hablarles. Y yo sé cómo hablarles para que ellos entiendan que son humanos. Y le estoy hablando por su propio bien. No para humillarlos. No para hacerlos que se sientan, um, que, que se sientan, que son menos que mí. No. No, 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 ¿cómo es la cosa? Creo, creo, ha nacido la persona que consiguió sus sentimientos a la, a la edad de 15, 18 años, no hombre, desde que nacemos tenemos sentimientos, desde que nacemos tenemos desde que nacemos tenemos Bro, don't get too close to the mic when you when you're speaking like that. Don't get too close; it cuts off. Sorry. Uh, yeah. You know. So yeah, we gotta be respected. Yes. Sensible, you know. I agree. Yeah. Ba vamos a leer lo que dice cro uh, Crocodilo. Lo que tenemos los conocimientos tenemos que bo bo volver. Uh? Volver. No coger. Coger dos o tres jóvenes y ser sus mentores. Claro que yes. sí. Yeah. Yes. But hay una hay, hay unión y en este siglo no lo vamos a lograr porque nadie quiere plant, plantar la semilla para que le encuentre generación o la tercera ya recoge su fruto de nuestra de sus esfuerzos así pienso yo pero si sí voy a decir algo mire yo desde desde el año 99 2000 Estoy en esto de baile. Uh -huh. 
Y como les digo, you know, para mí no solo es baile. When I'm working with the youth, cuando estoy trabajando con los jóvenes, entre medio de la de, de la de la de los ensayos, right? Metido en los ensayos es puntualidad. Yep. Cómo llevarse con la gente. Uf. Cómo lograr tus metas aunque no te lleves con las personas en tu equipo. Yep. Cómo después coger todo lo que aprendiste y aplicarlo a tu vida. Uf. That's discipline. Y todo eso yeah. crea disciplina. Yeah. Y, um, uh, real quick, hola tía Gladys, Gladys Chimilio. Chimilio. Hola tía, hola que usted compartió el video tía, comparte el video. <ríe> Ella dijo, en nuestra comunidad les dices, vea a terapia, lo primero que te dicen, yo no estoy loco o loca, necesitamos terapia para aprender a dejar muchas cosas. Exactamente, ¿Es verdad? Yes. ¿Es verdad? yes, yes, la terapia no es para, para, para los locos, la psicología es, mire, le voy a decir algo. De mi entendimiento y de lo que yo sé. ¿Verdad? De una manera u otra, ni tengo un vaso aquí, pero si, si llenas, si llenas un, un vaso, un, un contenedor con agua, ¿verdad? Y lo sigues llenando y lo sigues llenando y lo sigues llenando y lo sigues llenando, sin que haya salida, se va a reventar. Uf. ¿Va? Se va a reventar. En nuestra, en nuestra cultura, en, en muchas culturas, existe el abuso de la mujer. Ajá. Yeah. El hombre pegándole a la mujer. Hasta la mujer también pegando al hombre. Abuso de los, de los, abuso de los niños. Yep. ¿Verdad? Todo eso existe. También hay otros que buscan. Buscan su refugio en las bebidas. Hablar con cualquier borracho, baja, a veces hasta lloran. Porque quieren sacar eso, o, o lo que la, la trauma, o lo que le pasó, o, o, o lo que están pasando, pero no saben cómo. Entonces, de una manera u otra tiene que salir. Yes. You know? Y es triste porque es verdad, es, es una de los, las cosas que pasan. Y, um, You know, like, I often feel like uh, that's one of the reasons is that there are not many successful businesses. Um, no hay muchos negocios que, que no pasan desde como un año o dos años porque no tienen las, la, la, ¿cómo se dice? Confidence en español. Sí, sí. Um, la confianza. La confianza, la self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, para, se, para seguir creciendo, para seguir adelante cuando las cosas se ponen difíciles. Porque la, lo primero que nuestros padres tal vez te dicen cuando tú quieres hacer algo diferente, cuando son un cipote, uh, they'll be like, nah, you should get a job. Yeah. Or you should go to college. It's not, yep, it's not going to work. Yep. That's a stupid idea. Yep. Yo, I haven't been, it hasn't been told to me, but I've heard it all from, you know, other people yeah. mm -hmm. that it's been told to, you know? Y eso es otra cosa que nos han... Que no han puesto, que no han indoctrinado, creo que esa es la, para, la palabra en español. But that's another thing that indoctrinated us on to make us believe that our ideas, talents, and skills won't work. Sí. Compa, yo conozco a personas por como no lo están haciendo como negocio completo, ¿verdad? No se están dando cuenta. Yo conozco a personas que cocinan y venden comida. Están logrando hacer 60 mil hasta 70 mil dólares al año. Facts. Cocinando y vendiendo en los parques. Pero como no lo están contando como un negocio, ni se están dando cuenta que esa cantidad es lo que están haciendo. Facts. Yeah. That is true, yo. Yeah. Es verdad. Me imagino que, digamos, si venden como unos, yo no sé bueno en matemática, ¿va? Pero uh -huh. si venden como unos 50 platos de pollo con tajada y cada pollo con tajada cuesta como 20, 25 dólares, ¿cuánto hizo en el día ahí nomás? Yo no, yo no, no lo voy a hacer rapidito, voy a hacer matemática. Hazla, hazla ahí. 
Porque yo también tengo los fondos aquí. Ajá. Ok. Vamos a poner que el precio de pollo contaje a 25 dólares. Aunque yo sé que ya subió. Pero lo vamos uh -huh. a dejar a 25. 25 times 50. Uh -huh. 1.250 dólares en un fucking día. ¿En, ¿En un día? En un día. Y nos tienen, ya ves, mira. Y nos tienen lavado de las mentes. Que tenemos que ir a trabajar por otra persona. Uh -huh. Que tenemos que ir a, a, a trabajar a un trabajo que no nos, que no nos gusta. Porque tenemos que hacer el dinero. Cuando en un día. Cocinando. O una cosa que, que solo es. Hobby. <risa> estás haciendo más en un día. Que en tu propio trabajo. Facts. Come on man. Y eso es lo que te iba a preguntar también. Um, Mariano. Mm -hmm. Es you know, si, uh, dancing. Choreography. Uh, passion. Hobby. Or business. Or is it all three. It's all three. And how do you manage? And how do you manage to like? How were you able to get out of that? Primero te que continuemos con esa pregunta. Gladys Chimilio dijo: físico emocional. Si le das amor a tu hijo y es varón, los padres dicen sigue que lo seguís consintiendo. Lo vas a hacer maricón y otros nombres más. Es verdad. I heard that too. I heard that. I've heard that. Yeah. Y eso y eso y esos mismos niños son los que se, se vuelven marihuaneros. Se vuelven alcohólicos, yep. se vuelven abusadores, yep. acosadores, todo eso, porque no están buscando el amor y el efecto y el cariño que no recibieron. Entonces, de una manera u otra, y, 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 y también le hemos dicho a ellos: no, no, no llores, vos sos hombre, llores. Ok, una, una vez más. Si llenas un contenedor con agua y seguís llenándolo y no tiene por dónde salir, va a explotar. Uf. Man. Uh, honestly, más gente, necesitamos que se conecte más gente, que más gente escuche lo que estamos diciendo. Aquí en Fun Conversations with Sensation estoy con mi yes, pana yes. Mariano Martínez. Uh, ay, Mariano, nosotros nos conocemos. Dímelo. O esta es la primera vez que estamos la hablando. La primera vez que estamos hablando, la verdad, compa. ¿Verdad? La ¿verdad? primera vez, yeah, man. Y es, así es, hay veces conversaciones como esta tienen que pasar, pero como habíamos uh, dicho más temprano en esta conversación, uh, la mayoría de nuestra gente son muy sensitiva a algunos a algunos temas porque ellos no, no, nunca se han mirado ellos mismos al espejo. Y cuando tú vienes y tú sos el espejo, le molesta. Y uh -huh. es, es, es demasiado triste que vivimos en una cultura que cuando tú quieres crecer como un empresario o empresista, como se diga, Uh -huh. um, no te dan apoyo porque ellos mismos no recibieron apoyo cuando estaban creciendo entonces ellos vienen con ese veneno y ese mismo veneno lo están empujando a la nueva juventud porque ellos no pudieron lograr lo que ellos querían lograr cuando ellos tenían la edad de nosotros así entonces, es ese es un, ese es un, un ciclo o yeah. ese cycle es que cycle. va a continuar en nuestra cultura si no lo quebramos porque esa negatividad, esa mentalidad pobre venenosa sí. Se Bien, tiene no sé. que desaparecer. Uh -huh, uh -huh, y uh -huh. como tú dirías, how would you say de una manera que nosotros, uh, para la nueva generación que viene después de nosotros, o los más jóvenes que los otros, que, que una cosa que tú harías para cambiar el ritmo de eso. Eh, hey, compa, ya lo he cambiado, compa. <risa> <risa> Yo ya lo he cambiado, mire. Hay muchos y, y, y los que no me conocen pueden, pueden buscarme. Hasta en Google, Mariano Martínez Garífuna, si, si lo ponen así, me van, me van, a, salir, me van a encontrar. Uh, um, en mis páginas y todas las redes sociales. Lo, yo siempre supe. Los domingos siempre nos reuníamos en los parques. ¿verdad? Y hay muchos comentarios que están entrando, que vamos a leer eso. Los domingos siempre había, you know, los reuníamos. Lo reuníamos en, en los parques, ¿verdad? Sea en Wampoco, sea en, en, en Linden, en Brooklyn. Ferry um, Point. Yeah, Ferry Point, Wampoco, el barco, all of them, right? Yeah. Yo siempre quise cambiar la imagen o enseñarle a los jóvenes que podemos lograr más de solo estar en los parques bebiendo, ¿cierto? Es un tiempo para que nosotros nos, nos reunim, reuniéramos como familia, como comunidad. Eso sí. Y eso no lo quito. ¿Verdad? 
pero también hay, habían otros que solo se reunían para, para ver, para tomar y solo eso no vine yo especialmente con lo, los Sweet Sixteen, los Dulces de Gisela, las quinceañeras hey aquí tenemos una, una oportunidad de autorizar a estos jóvenes yes. hagamos más con ellos, hagamos que ellos entiendan que la raza garífuna tiene mucho poder y si alguien les abre las puertas a estos jóvenes uh, ya, yeah. entonces dije yo, ok, estamos ensayando para, para un Sweet 16, pero una vez más voy a asegurar que lleguen puntualmente porque lo van a necesitar en el futuro de verdad voy a asegurar que se sepan llevar verdad aunque no aunque tal vez siempre en ese, en ese en aquel entonces existía los de Brooklyn contra el Bronx verdad los de los del Bronx contra Manhattan no 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 eso no existe aquí cuando entran aquí somos uno y vamos a trabajar juntos yes también, también existían los guatemaltecos contra los, 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 los hondureños, contra los beliceños. No, 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 no. Cuando entran aquí a este ensayo, somos todos garífunas y hasta ahí. Y nos vamos a respetar mutuamente. No vamos a dejar que el agua que separa Honduras con, Bel con Belice o el agua que separa Honduras con Guatemala no, nos tire para atrás. No, es, es pura agua por agua right yes y en eso boom, fui trabajando con ellos ahora hay unos que son artistas está está chris de grupo ecstasy que maneja grupo ecstasy sí. está arno también que tiene garifuna aerobics está está el, 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 el homie verdad Jaffe, que ahora está manejando su grupo también, está, está, perdón, está Vanessa en Jeff, que ahora son, son chef, ¿verdad? Y muchos más, y muchos más. Living Sadie, pero yo también lo autoricé a él. Hey, tú tienes que ser tú y tú tienes que, tienes que crecer en lo que te gusta hacer. Yes. You know? That's true. Yeah, man. So, yo ya, y, y es así que tenemos que hacer la diferencia. Muchas veces lo que sí tenemos que hacer, lastimosamente, es, es esconder la meta, la, la meta, ¿cómo es cómo la cosa? Esconder la meta y solo enseñar el baile. O, o, o esconder la meta y solo, y también lo mismo con, con el fútbol, o solo enseñar que es fútbol. No, eh, lo que están aprendiendo es disciplina. Sí. Están aprendiendo a, a, a hacer algo, a desarrollarse, a hacer sí. algo que les gusta a ellos. You know? So, pero muchas veces no se ve así. Entonces, ok. Yo muchas veces le he dicho a los padres, no, fíjense que tal, si, su hijo, si, su hijo, si su hijo quiere bailar, tengo un programa gratis los sábados, todavía lo tengo aquí ahorita en el Bronx, okay. los sábados de, de, de 11 a de 11 a, a 3, los jóvenes nice. desde 5 para arriba, y yeah, es, un, es un programa gratis, donde los muchachos vienen a bailar, les enseño cómo hacer coreografía, todo, cómo, y, y ver exactamente qué saben hacer ellos, y, y amplificar lo que ya saben hacer ellos, you ¿no? Know? Pero mi meta, mi meta, la verdad, es asegurar que ellos sepan que tienen valor. Exacto. Y que Dios no hace basura. Y si Dios permitió que ellos entraran a este mundo, es por algo. Uf. Uh, 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 esa, esas palabras son bien... Um, es muy inspiring. Um, um, honestamente, nosotros necesitamos más gente positiva, así como, como usted. Uh, como tú lo haces con tu con tu, con tus niños y otra vez cuando dijiste que es el, los sábados de las 11 de la mañana a las 3 de la tarde los sábados de los sábados de 11 de la mañana a las 3 de la tarde ¿Todos en la todos los sábados ya yeah. okay. 3630 de la tercera avenida 
Y, y, en, y en la cuál, escuela que está ahí. ¿Y cuál es, uh -huh. y cuál es tipo de bailes que tú enseñas? Uh, hacemos hip hop, hacemos afrobeat, hacemos salsa, merengue, okay. um, punta, um, pasos, o, o sea, una mezcla, como un poco una mezcla cultural. Sí. También hacemos también, yeah. So, entonces ellos aprenden de, de diferentes cosas. Y Tap, hacen... jazz, de todo. ¿Y lo, hace, y, lo, um, ¿Y lo hacen también para bodas o solo para que eh, No, yo también hago, hago coreografía para bodas también. Nice. Yeah. Eh, miren mi gente, si alguna vez usted necesita a alguien que traiga para su quinceña, para su hija, para su, para su hijo, que ahora están celebrando aquí el 15 de los niños ahora. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is honestly something that I'm It's not good. Gonna, It's, I don't shut the idea down. It's just I feel like you gotta be presenting it in a more masculine, masculine. I feel you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We um, need a. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It. There's that's that's another thing. Um, there's a rites of passage in our culture for women, but there's not for men. Lo que era el um, cuál era? Abel Mahani creo que o Aru Mahani. Uno de los el que el que era de los hombres. Ya eso ya como que se perdió, se está perdiendo. Pero nosotros como hombres también teníamos lo nuestro. Enseñaron a, lo, a los jóvenes cómo se tendría que hacer cosas, you know, um, siendo el hombre de la casa, you know, cómo hacer, cómo hacer por tu familia, cómo y todo eso. Entonces ya se está, tenemos que regresar a todo eso. Porque lo que estamos aprendiendo con estas otras culturas... Yep. Es lo que nos está es lo, lo que nos está destruyendo. I agree. Yeah. I definitely agree with that. I feel like uh, all this type of um, mentalities or executions, I would say, definitely got to end. Um, yo quiero yo quiero leer uno de los comentarios que han puesto ahí. Uh, gracias por todos los que han estado activados con nosotros, que han estado conectados esta noche aquí. De, ma, otra vez Mariano Mar Martínez de J Dove Production. Um, Sandra Joseph dijo. No creo que sea veneno, yo creo que sea la ignorancia de no querer aprender. Ah, I agree with that. That's true, Miss, Miss, Miss Sandra. That's true. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I disagree. Yo, yo creo, yo estoy... ¿Cómo te digo? Sí. Y también. <laughs> sí y también. Yeah. No voy a decir sí, no. Sí y también. Okay. Um, también hay personas que ya... Dos cosas. Ya se cansaron de aprender el sistema, you know, um, europeo, el sistema español. Entonces ya no quieren aprender nada más. Ya no, ya no ven el valor en aprender otras cosas. También um, existe eso de... Ya, ya fueron... Ya, ya fueron años y años y años que ellos se sintieron que son estúpidos. ¿Verdad? Son wirro y pues, vos no aprendes, vos sos estúpido, vos aquí, vos allá, que esto, que lo otro, que no sé qué más. Que ahora ya para, para enseñarle otras cosas nuevas, no, ya no, ya no. Y you no, know, entonces, so. Pues yo digo, sí y tal vez. Like <laughs> sí that, también, yeah. sí también. Because it's true, like, you know, what yeah. you're saying, uh, uh, lo, que, uh, la, 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 lo que la señora Sandra dijo, y lo que tú dijiste, I understand both sides of the coin, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. como tú dijiste, uh, sí también, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. Sí, yeah, y también. I, I like that, mm -hmm. I like that, I gotta, I gotta add that to, <laughs> to my vocabulary, my, 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 the way I answer things, I gotta add that. <laughs> um, Lisa Green wrote, I think it's, a, it's great to Lisa. learn about other cultures and the bridge. And the, and the bridge the gap. The bridge the gap. Mm -hmm. However, However, as I stated, we need to remain true to the to our culture and our essence. The issue is we mimic what other people do rather than preserve what we were given by our ancestors. And That's right. Ancestors. That's right. That's right. And, and 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 what I was saying earlier, Lisa, with that is that it's because of popularity. popularity. Again, if if we're taught that the iPhone is the best, and then an iPhone puts $500,000 of propaganda and of commercials on the TV and all you keep seeing is iPhone, everybody's going to want to buy an iPhone. So we're lacking in the, in the quote-unquote propaganda and the commercials of the Garifuna culture and why it's so great to be Garifuna. Once we rev that up, 
everybody's gonna run back and be like, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm ready for that too. But we're missing the, the yeah, we have to promote and 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 big up who we are, and then people yes. are gonna start coming back. I like that. That that uh, this a good uh, good statement. I like that. That's true. What you said. Uh, I I think we should definitely um, try to emphasize our culture uh, slightly more than we have done. Because uh, I know there's a lot of people that are very pro Garifuna, that they really do their best to like showcase our culture every second, every minute that they can. And then there's others that they, they're not very pro Garifuna. They're kind of ashamed of us. And I don't blame some of them because I understand why. Because some of the actions that has happened throughout time, like since I was a kid, some of it could be a bit shameful and disgraceful in the sense that like, okay, like, like how long this is still going to keep the same exact thing happening? You know, like the shootings mm -hmm. at the parties, you know, mm -hmm. uh, fights at the parks or shootings at the park. Knowing that probably the, you you there with your family having a good time, like, and it's you hurting you hurting your fellow Garifuna. Your fellow Garifuna, yeah. It, it's like you, yeah. know, you you literally bringing the violence to your own community. Like, what is wrong with you? Like, I don't get it. Like, you, you know what that is called? That's that's maybe some are gonna disagree, but that's called self hate. Self hate. Self hate. There's no way, if I love myself enough, that I'm gonna try to hurt you because I'm I know that I'm hurting myself if I try to hurt you. Facts. But those who are like, oh, I'm gonna shoot this person up again, um, like Sandra Joseph said, you know, and here as well, you know, the youth don't find family at home, so they run out in the streets to find family, and a lot of times that family in the street is not educating them properly or teaching them properly. They don't know who they are. They don't know the greatness that they have. They don't know, you know. So it's like, I don't. Yo, la cosa, la, 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 el mensaje es esto. Yo no valgo nada, vos tampoco. Facts. Yes. That that yo, honestly, man, like, thank you, bro, for real. Like, we're not done yet, no but doubt, I just wanna man. real quick say thank you, cause man, yeah. uh, this type of conversations I like to have. This type of deep rooted you know intellectual conversation because i feel like oftentimes like yo puedo ser payaso if i want to don't get me wrong mm -hmm. yo puedo ser payaso i could have a good time that's like pretty much anybody else right and but i feel like the reason i kind of bring that out more often than my other side is because oftentimes if i do try to speak about topics like this like i'm the, i'm one of those people that like i don't shy away from hitting topics that's a little a little stink, you know, stinks. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I feel but you. since I'm not a popular guy, you know, I don't be, you know, on on writing on themes or like what's going on. Like I keep it a hundred to myself, regardless at all times. Some people like don't live their truth; they don't live reality. So sometimes when you come and speak about these type of topics in a mm -hmm. or they listen to it in a podcast, they mm -hmm. quickly leave the conversation because they're hearing like, "Oh, damn." It sounds like they're talking about me, but we're not talking about you. Right, we're having right, right, a, general right. conversation a general conversation about what's happening within our community. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that comes with the issues from home. You've been criticized, like we spoke earlier, going back to earlier, you've been criticized for so long in your life that now that as soon as, as, soon as you hear a glimpse of something that reminds you or gives you reminiscences of your past. Of your past, yes. You think somebody's it attacking it you. Yes. Nobody's attacking not. you, sis. Nobody's mm -hmm. attacking you, bro. This nope. is a general convo about everybody in our community where, like, mm -hmm. we just honestly need to have these type of topics more often. But as you can see, right, we had about the, the a majority of 10 people at one point, you know, and then it, it steadily stood like around five or six or four, which mm -hmm. is fine because I'd rather have quantity uh or, no quality over quantity. Over quantity. So but I'd rather have six, five people that are willing mm -hmm. to listen to your product, your service, and while we're talking about our community, than mm -hmm. to have 20, 25 people tuning in because I'm being a clown. And that's what's wrong with our community. Like oftentimes, if I was to oh. be doing something stupid online, if I was to be doing something corny or clownish, they will be tuning in because that's what they're into. So they like when I disrespect myself and disrespect them because that's what they feed off negativity. Yo. And, and and that's the thing that when I, I gave you the analogy earlier. If you put dogs in a cage and you leave them there and you feed them scraps, when they open that cage, they're going to look for the scraps. They're not going to look for 
higher level anything. They're not gonna look for the filet mignon. They're not gonna look. You know what I'm saying? They're just gonna look for what they used to, and that's what they. That's that's a lot of what they did. Also, what has been done to us through TV, through media, through all of this stuff, bombarding us with foolishness. Yes. That now, when the doors are open for us to go look for greatness and yep. be great. We don't know how to. We we emulate the foolishness. Yes. That's a perfect one. We definitely emulate the foolishness. Mm -hmm. I like that. And um, everybody that tuned in, like, thank you for sharing. Lisa, hopefully you shared the video, Lisa. I would appreciate it if you did. And if you didn't, still thank you for tuning in anyways and listening. Crocodile, if you shared the video, Crocodile, thank you for sharing it. And if you didn't, thank you for still being tuned in with us this whole time. Guys, um, listening. listening. And, Crocodile, um, if you shared the video, Everybody else, you know, uh, thank you. And I got a few more questions for uh, absolutely my boy Mariano that I definitely wanted to ask. Absolutely, um, absolutely. What what are some what are some obstacles that you faced uh, when you started your business? Like when you started doing what you do, what are some obstacles that you feel that like you could have avoided in the process? I would say some obstacles were. Telling my ideas to small-minded people. Yeah, telling my ideas to small-minded people because there's certain things that I could have been doing years ago. Yes. That I didn't do, right? The stuff, some of the stuff I'm doing now, like I didn't do it because even though I spiritually knew it would work. Yes. The the indoctrination playing in my head even on a subliminal level was that might not work that might not work i don't know if you should do that that might not work you know so it's, it's always a fight of self against self you know what i'm yes. saying that's the biggest fight people think it's me against you or it's you against no it's yourself against yourself that's the biggest fight Oof. you know what i'm saying yeah that's the biggest fight so for me it's like that was one that was one of the biggest things um not fully having the resources yes to do what it is that i saw yes. so i had to stay i had to stay on a like you know regular kind of thing just keep pounding the pavement and all that until all of this stuff came about yes you know what i mean because it's like Back in the days for me to be like, um, oh yeah, I'm gonna put my stuff out there and everybody's gonna see my stuff. Where, how, social media did not exist, yep. you know? And we didn't know the power of the internet and power all this, all this stuff. And you know, like, again, it didn't exist. And when it started coming in, we were still was like, huh, what's that? You know what I'm saying? So those were some of the things. Um, I don't know if I wanna say other people coming in and trying to sabotage some of the things that I was doing. That was the case, but I've always, I, I look past that and I'm like, you know, nothing can stop me. You know what I'm saying? I'm all the way up. Ha! But, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like nothing can stop me. So I'm going to just keep going, you know, or the other, I'm going to get past this, 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 this speed bump that looks like a mountain. Cause it's not, it's a speed bump. I love that. So I'm going to get past it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love that. Yo, you got some amazing analogies, bro. I'm going to go man. back to this video and I'm going to write <laughs> some of those analogies because those are, those are strong, bro. And um, Lisa, so bro, Lisa, bro, we are rich people, but the motto of our mind is a terrible thing to waste. The, the motto of the mind is a terrible thing to waste. It has become the extinct, extinct rather than the underbelly to, to progress. These topics are great and are very educational. Conversations like this are important and it, ex it expands people's intellect and horizons. And horizons. Keep going. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, beautiful. I, I Thank appreciate you. that. That's true. Yes. And then my wife wrote, how would you introduce Garifuna to someone that wants to learn about the culture? Oh. Okay. I The way I would introduce it, first and foremost, I would let them know facts. Right? And the facts are, we were a nation before the before the US existed. Yes. We were a nation before Honduras had independence. Yes. You know what I'm saying? In fact, we fought to make sure Honduras had independence. Yes. Yes. We are a people of resilience and power 
because we survived basically our own kind of genocide and holocaust and they were not able to kill kill us off the way they thought the, the way they wanted to i agree you know what i'm saying so and we yes. still preserve a lot of our culture our norms our our, our our foods our language you know it is dying down but it's still there and then the other part of it is um there are people that are i'm gonna say spiritually waking up yes so who we are and what our power is and going back and reclaiming our language and reclaiming our heritage and reclaiming our culture, man. It's just beautiful. Yes. So we are a powerful people. Also, I, I, we were Garifunas before the term Afro Latino existed. Okay. We are a powerful people of color of african descent and because of that fact we're able to learn any language we have to or we want to yes. so that's why we speak spanish not that we're hispanic no not at all we're not no we're not all got them afro latinos no we're not we got ifuna we're garifuna we've always been garifuna we had to learn a language because of where we were placed if our history had been us being exiled to China, we would all be speaking Chinese. But that doesn't mean we're going to turn Chinese. Yes. We'll still be black. <laughs> we'll still be Garifunas. We'll still be African. Of African descent and Arawak descent. Yes. So that's who we are. I, I, I love what you said. Like, uh, right, real quick. Isamar said, yes, tuning in, and I love it. Okay, thank you, Isamar. I wish thank you would have tuned in from the beginning, but I guess you probably, you know, we're busy or something, you know, um, you know, took you a while, whatever. But thank you for tuning in right now. Thank you, Isamar. She's one of those uh, entrepreneurs that one day I gotta have you on my show too, Isamar. Perfect. Yeah. I, I, I would love to meet you and 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 connect. Um, who well, Crocodile said something new. Crocodile said, "I'm kind of selfish in that part porque no puedo introducir mi cultura a otra gente si estoy fallando con no volver a nuevas generaciones garífanas en su propia cultura." Oh, I like that. That's true. I like that too. I like that. I like that. That's basically in the Thank you, Samar. Um, um, this question is for both. My wife, how do you feel about those that say I was born here, but my parents are from Honduras? Oh, damn. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> that's a great one. Uh, that's a good one, baby. That's Thank a you. great one. You know, it's interesting. You want to you hit that one? Yes, let's go. Let's go with it. Okay, okay. For me... I'm always one that I like I love to understand the reasons why. Right? And a lot of it is language. It's two things. Two things. One for those of us who were born here. Right? A lot of times we've been made to believe by our parents or relatives that we're not Garifuna because we were born here. Yep. We're made to believe that. So this is part of the reason why a lot of the people here that were born here say, you know, I was born here and my mother's from Honduras. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to I'm Garifuna, I'm Honduran or whatever, or, or yes. Guatemala, right? Or even Belizean. That's one. What was my other point with that? The other point, again, going to language. We have to move away from what we're being taught here. Yes. We're, we're being taught. Here's the difference. Watch this. My mother's brother. My mother's sister. And I do this. That's my aunt. Yep. Esa es mi tía. Ese es mi tío. Me pertenece a mí. Yes. Aquí la cultura europea es de separación. Yes. De separación. Esa persona le pertenece a mi papá. Es hermano de mi papá. Ajá, ya no es nada. 
I mean, entonces. So that's part of when when people speak like that. That's what yes. we're getting it from. That's, that, that's true. That's what but, we're getting it. Por eso es por eso es lo que hacemos muchos. La enseñanza nuestra la nuestra cultura a otros, pero no no nuestra juventud. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Is that, is that, is that como lo que está pasando, like, uh, well, to answer your question very real quick, uh, honestly, I feel like it has to do with like the mentality of being an immigrant. I feel like if you say that you from Honduras or Belize or Guatemala or Nicaragua, even though you were born here, right? Yes, you are a United States citizen, but you know your parents are from over there, so you want to uh, make a uh, differentiate yourself from like, oh no, I'm not Honduran, I'm American, but mind you. Your culture comes from Honduras. Your culture is Garifuna, but it comes from those different countries of Belize, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua, and even probably the island of St. Vincent. And, you know, sometimes, like, I, me, me personally, I often say that, like, I'm from Honduras, even though I was born here. But the reason why is because I have a lot of history and memories from Honduras because I grew up over there and I learned about the Garifuna culture and lived it even though I don't speak Garifuna but I lived the, the Garifuna way for 13 years of my life and where did I learn that I learned that in Honduras not in New York even if the people wasn't raised in, in Honduras they were raised in New York but they could still show some type of pride to show where their parents come from and oftentimes when they do that they kind of show like they kind of ashamed of it when you do, oh no, I'm not Honduras. I'm not from Honduras. My parents are. You say it with a with a tone of disgust. Of oh, disgust. Mm -hmm. Tone matters in anything you say and do. If you say it in a way that makes you feel shameful, that's how other people will perceive it as. So I feel to answer your question, babe. That's kind of, in my opinion, that's kind of what it is. Oftentimes, people just to, just want to make themselves feel like. They better than the ones from Honduras because they were born here, which is not the case. Even if you were born here or born in Honduras, it doesn't matter. We all got even at the end of the day, you know. And that's it. Sorry to cut you off. Go ahead, man. Talk. Speak. No, no, speak. No, no, finish. No. Finish it. That, I'm done with that part. That's that's my whole thing. And, and true in fact, like you could be born here, you could be born Belize, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, the U.S. You know the the um what's the other one, Canada. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, yeah, they still got in Saint Vincent. People people think they're not. They still got in Original got in They're still in Saint Vincent. They just had to stop speaking the language so that they wouldn't get killed. Yes. Um. So, as long as we recognize that we're got I'm cool with that. Because honestly, yes. even me, I love being a Honduras. I'm like I'm always there. Sometimes two, three times a year. You know what I'm nice. saying? Um, I don't even claim Honduras like that either. Like I don't say I'm Honduran. I say I'm Garifuna. Yeah. And for a lot of time, like for a long time, people thought I was Guatemalan because <laughs> I just I'm, I'm Garifuna. Oh, where you from? That I'm Garifuna. I'm Garifuna. We're not gonna play the separation game. We're not gonna play. You know, I'm Garifuna. Yes, I like that. So, got it. <laughs> you know what's crazy? I started using that more often now. Like now that I'm older, I started using that more. Of like I'm more Garifuna. Like even in the in the in the legal documents when they say are you Puerto Rican, Dominican, whatever crap they put, I'll be like, yes. Yo, I, often, With my check put, my shirt. I put like I rather not say or black because mm -hmm. I feel like I I personally identify myself as black. Yes, because I I kind of I kind of. I, I vibe with that culture like you know I kind of represent myself as a black man that yes mm -hmm. happens to speak Spanish but I am Garifuna if there was an option in the legal document in those papers that says Garifuna that's what I would check all the time but there isn't or if they were to put others which sometimes they do now sometimes other I put Garifuna Garifuna that's right sometimes because now all the right. time they got the option of other you know but yeah you see, it's crazy that, that you it's, sorry, it's crazy that you say that because that's why my cousin and I created the check one shirts many years back. That's that's me. Y'all own that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Garifuna, that's, yeah. That's, that's why we created it, yeah. Yeah. Yo, you gotta hook me up with a sweater, bro. I, I got you, I got you, I got you. They're selling on checkoneapparel.com. I'm putting in the chat. Yes. But yeah, definitely, bro. Yo, you see yeah, guys? And that's why we did it. 
I didn't know. You see, I did not yeah. know that. I, that's yeah. look, look. He just gave another very important information. He made some sweaters with his um, family, and they for sale. He's gonna put the link on the on the chat. So you know, go check them there out. Yeah. I, know I will. I'm a cop one. Oh, I, I'm a cop for perfect. my family. Yeah. Um, honestly, you everybody stop supporting. Stop supporting Garifuna businesses and stop trying to like always lowball people and ask for free stuff. Nah, bro. Right. If you really, if you really bang with the product, you know you like the product. Uh, support it by buying it. Exactly. Support it by yeah. buying it. Support it by buying that, it. Yeah. That's how you support entrepreneurs by buying their service, especially if it's quality. If it's exactly. quality. You know that that work, the hard work that everybody puts in, right, Mariano? You as an mm -hmm. entrepreneur, you know the hours, the time uh, that you have to put behind your work. Yes. For you to go low ball yourself, nah, bro. We're not doing that. So and make sure you go to his website. Make sure you save it. Is check one apparel dot com. Yes, yes. We are about to close it. In, like, we got like seven minutes left. Uh, Lisa, I'm gonna I'm gonna read your comment real quick, Lisa. She said, "You wanna read it, bro?" Yeah, yeah. Nationality does not make you, or there is a part of you. However, culture makes you. DNA makes you because you can take it anywhere. Uh huh. Culture and DNA allows you to have a conversation with strangers and educate. When people see black as a whole, they immediately put you in a box of failures. Ah, so true. But when you speak about that culture and DNA, boy. They stand there and watch you while you captivate their attention. So true. So true. And this is exactly why, like, we have to continue letting the youth know to be proud of being Garifuna and what exactly it means to be Garifuna. That's the part. Because I know for me as a fact, like, ugh, I'm about to get chills. I wasn't fully proud to be Garifuna until I got to college. Oof. Until I got to college. And I always ask the question, what if I didn't go? Because I remember all I knew when I was younger, and this is where we have to educate the youth that are Garifuna. All I knew is that we met in the park every Sunday and we ate some strange food that tasted so good. That's it. None of our other friends ate that. None of our other friends. We go to every other friend house or whatever. We will not see no machuca. We will not see no tapo. We will not see no alabundiga yeah. in that house. So for us to even explain what it is, we couldn't explain it. I, I couldn't explain it. I could not explain what it meant to be Garifuna. I could not explain the name itself. I get to... I, so when I was in high school, I was Jamaican for a while. <laughs> I was a daddy in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just Caribbean. You know what I'm saying? Because I couldn't explain what being Garifuna was. I couldn't explain it. I agree. Yo, when I went to college, and I went to Mega Evers College, a black college in Brooklyn, New York here. I went to Mega Evers. And they, they started this whole thing, this class, this course started called Caribbean History. Right? Yeah. And so people started, you know, they, because the college was mainly like Caribbean, a lot of people started like kind of protesting and they were like, oh, why well, we got to learn about Caribbean history? We are Caribbean. I want to learn about this and want to learn about that, da da da. But, but they were able to push it and put Carib Caribbean history in the curriculum. Facts. I so happened to take the class, Caribbean history. Professor um, Dr. George Irish. Senior, senior, right? right. Yes. Um, he started. He, he um, but my head loud. Hey, ecstasy. <laughs> yeah, my bad. My bad. My bad. Um, he started talking about. In like two weeks, we're gonna learn about this culture that revolutionized the the the, the entire Caribbean. They're part of why the you know the Caribbean was able to to stay the Caribbean and fight against. Um, genocide and fight against enslavement and all that stuff like that. And I'm like, wow, that's interesting. Then following week, he's saying the same thing. There's this culture and this community that revolutionized and helped the Caribbean be the Caribbean and stay the Caribbean and all about it. And I'm like, yo, that's powerful. Yes. 
that third week, he's like, okay, y'all, we're going to learn about this culture. He put on a video. Bro. When I heard the Yoruman song, yo, I just started. I was like, finally, I belong somewhere. Finally, my culture's in a curriculum. And they play, he played the Yurume song, and I just started singing. Tears started dropping. And all, all my colleagues just were looking at me. And it's like they felt. And they understood what I was like feeling. Because it was like, we talking about them, but you're one of them? Yep. <laughs> yo, that shit is deep, bro. Yo, you almost got me like that. I had to get, I had to get, I had to like be like inside, like, you know, hold that shit back, cause you know it's like honestly, bro. Like this yo. is the type, this is the type of connection that we should be making, you know, as humans, as individuals, as Garifunas, as black, white, shiny, doesn't matter, bro. I feel like if you have something to present to the world, come yeah. bring it, talk about it. Let's talk yeah. about it. And yeah. I feel like um, that's one of the what that's one of the things that God brought me to this earth for. I feel like God put me here to be able to um, uh, put other people in a place that they could express their truth to talk about things that we all should hear and put mm -hmm. people like you in my life so people could get to know you too and your business and everything that you do. Everybody, I this is Mariano you, Martinez man. from J. Dove Productions. Productions. Thank um, you. So um, besides the quinceañeras, anything else that, you, that your production company uh, also does? Yeah, okay. So put this in here so i just dropped my link in the chat that's how everybody can connect with me and there it's on my link from instagram and also it, it connects to everything that i do i have a youth podcast where i'm talking about i'm talking we have it's a chapter called phase two so we're talking about we're talking to all of the youth who are now adults that i empowered many years ago who are now doing their own businesses and their own ventures and their own entrepreneurship journeys and all that stuff like that. So we're talking with them and we're talking with um, other youth and people who use dance as a, as a way to um, either stay young for themselves or work with the youth. So the pod, that podcast is there. I have a course um, for quinceañeras who are gonna who wanna do their own quinceañera or sweet 16 choreography themselves because they probably cannot afford a full-fledged choreographer. So I have a course that they can just tap into, they can purchase and learn everything. It tells you how to break down music, how to, um, yeah, how to break down music, how to choreograph to the music, how to pick the right people to be in your court, how to start off the first um, rehearsal with an icebreaker so everybody knows it's serious and everybody's working together. Um, and just, it takes them all the way through. And it comes with coaching for me. Nice. So it's about like four, about six weeks of coaching, six sessions of coaching. Um, also, there's another course in there as well that is for dancers and choreographers that want to get into the Quinceañera and Sweet 16 industry, choreography yes. industry, because the, the industry itself is $38 billion a year. This is how much is spent on Quinceañera and Sweet 16. 38, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, one la one last question um, from my wife, Mariano. Where do you see your production going in the near future? And do you feel like your production has made an impact? I see my production being a million dollar, a multi million dollar brand. Um, we're already building in coaching programs, so we can teach other people, and we can we can teach other dancers and choreographers to make money as dancers and choreographers, not having to do else. We're also building where um, teams are going to be able to do their own Kingston Gator Sweet 16, but then also learn how to do other people Kingston Gator Sweet 16. And with that skill, we're, learning, we're teaching them how to make money for themselves. Okay. Um, what else is there? Of course, we're in, we're in the school systems with our, with our curriculum, right? So we sell to the school system and nonprofits. Um, I'm doing a, a, a play on... Um, well, not, well, when I say a play, running a play with other dance studios, other dance studios, and teaching them how to set up a system so that they can make money doing King Saint Gallas and Sweet Sixteens too. Each King Saint Gallas Sweet Sixteen package right now runs from about two thousand to four thousand dollars. 
So and that's just one package. So you do that on a regular, you can make ten thousand on Monday, on Saturday, ten thousand on 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 Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Do it there that we way. go. Um, yeah. So and yes, as far as the impact, absolutely, the social proof exists because the youth who those who were youth and young back then are now self-reporting what the company has done for them. And not only that, we're actually in generation four of the Dance Academy. Those who I did their Sweet Sixteens in the first generation now have children and their children are now with the Academy. Oh, wow. Yeah. Jesus, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And so Mariano, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? Uh-huh. <laughs> I'll be 47 this year, man. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> okay, 47. I'm yeah. saying I'll be 47 this year, if, bro. If anybody, if anybody knows this man, can you put on the chat how old he really is? Because <laughs> he's telling me he's about to be 47. Wait, wait, but I thought this guy was like 35, 34. <laughs> he's telling me he's about to be. So you're about to hit 50. Thank you. Okay, I'm bro. About to hit 50. Yeah. I, I don't Still moving and dancing, baby. Still flexible. Ah! <laughs> if anybody knows this guy, put his real age in the shack because I don't believe it. Like, it's, I do not believe that, babe. Do you believe that shit? No, right? Like, yeah. Hey. But anyways, um, Mariano, thank you so yes. much, man. Um, thank you. you it's been a pleasure, man. man. It's been a yeah. pleasure. Thank you. Um, continue doing like doing. Keep this platform, bro. We need this. We need this, man. We need this. Thank you. She said, nope. <laughs> we we need this platform. I need you to keep going. And then I honest, we're gonna keep talking behind the scenes because this there's so much business behind what you're doing right here that you can really take this really far, man. Thank you. I so appreciate we'll talk. That. Absolutely. You're doing a great thing, man. And I appreciate you. Everybody, um, if you ever want me to promote your business, your parties, whatever you got going on, you want me to promote it in my show, in one of my episodes, because I'll be doing this for the long run, hit me up. We'll talk business, good prices. Um, you know, I got good exposure, good, decent following. But yes. so you never know who I know. I never know who you know. But working together, we know a lot. So exactly. thank you again. This was Mariano Martinez from J Dove Productions. My name is Sensation. And this is my show, Fun Conversations with Sensation. And I'll see you next Tuesday. All right, y'all. Peace.